Hello, I'm Andy Rash, the technical trainer for DMAG Cranes and Components. In our first KM video, we showed you how to do a shim removal brake adjustment. Well, we want to go further to show you what to do when you run out of shims and have to renew and replace the brake disc. So, when the shims are down to the last shim here and another adjustment is needed, you'll have to order parts that will include a brake ring, new shims, and center hubcap. Now, let's show you how to access this. We'll have to remove the brake cap and fan as an assembly, remembering that the fan has plastic tabs on its hub that pass up through the ID hole on the back of the brake cover. Once the nuts have been removed, We'll use a screwdriver in the meaty section of the stator and brake cap to help it come off the studs. We are pulling the hub of the fan off the splined end shaft of the motor shaft. Now that the end cap of the motor is removed, we can take a look at the inside and see the metal part of the brake lining and see the rubberized portion of the brake lining that's attached to a disc attached to the rotor with four socket head cap screws. Inside, looking in the center, we can see the center of the fan. We can see that there's a wire stirrup here that we should account for and not lose track of. This is the mechanical link that allows us to push on the center cap of the fan and make that push for axial displacement measurement against the face of the rotor brake assembly. We'll come back to this for reassembly. Also, we'll notice the two tabs of the fan. We'll compress them slightly. We'll pull our plastic fan out from the brake cap motor end assembly. These two tabs are why it must be disassembled as an assembly first and then taken apart. If you look at the center hub where the tabs go in, you can see there are slots that create the orientation of where the tabs for the fan go in and where the stirrup goes in. Once the end cap is removed, I'll be very careful that the stator doesn't fall off the long studs. I'll be able to remove my rotor assembly. As soon as it comes out, I'm going to inspect it. I'm going to make sure there's no scuffing marks here on the bars of the rotor, and I'm going to inspect the thrust collar on the front. This plastic thrust collar is the part that sets the internal rotor stator air gap. They are plastic and they exist in a potentially hot environment. You can find them melted or smashed over a long period of usage. So they fit in the front with tabs. Make sure and account for it and its condition. It butts up against a collar on the main motor shaft. So we'll look up inside the motor to make sure it's there. You'll see your splines that the ID of the rotor rides in and you'll note that about halfway up near the back edge of the motor there's a wire clip in a groove within the spline. That's the clip that creates the spring pressure for the internal brake spring found in the rotor. We'll disassemble the rotor further to show you that brake spring. The replacement brake disc set comes with new shims, a new hub cap, and a disc with pre-attached rubberized lining. So we'll have to remove this old one from the back of the rotor, removing these four screws. Now that we pulled the rotor out and taken the bolts off the back of the brake disc, 
this gets hammered on with usage. So we'll probably have to tap it with a bit of a mallet to break it loose. This reveals the soft start mechanical coupling that's up inside the rotor assembly. This is riveted together and it houses the brake spring inside. There's a retaining washer with a cupped lip that faces outward. A lot of people think this is a spring retainer and they reassemble with the lip downward toward the spring, but it needs to be upward and out so that it aligns the center of the hub of the brake disc. This is the brake disc with its hub cap attached. The stirrup, when you push on it, actually pushes into the hub cap. You can actually even see where the dents were in this from where the stirrup in this motor was used over the years to push on it. A new brake set comes with a new hub cap, new brake disc with the pre-attached lining, and a new bundle of shims. So this is the replacement part. When you run out of shims, you'll notice that you won't have any of the cleaning grooves left at this point. So, replace this assembly. But when you reassemble, please make sure that on the back of the mechanical coupling, when you align it into the rotor, there's a wide orientation and a skinny orientation to the geometry of the coupling. Make sure that the wide part goes into the wide recess and the skinny part goes into the skinny recess in the back of the rotor. If you don't get that right, you won't have the spring pressure and you won't have anything to push back when you're taking an axial displacement reading. Now that that's aligned, we'll introduce the brake disc lining up the holes for the four screws. So we're trapping the coupling inside the back of the rotor. Start each screw in its corresponding hole. And then we'll tighten them down. Torques are published on our job aid for the different size screws found in different motors. We'll return our assembled rotor assembly to the motor shaft push it up inside the stator. At this point, we'll check that there's some spring return, that we got the coupling oriented right. And then we'll now deal with putting the brake cap and fan assembly back on. I'll show you a special, specific method that will help you to get it right the first try every time. So let's prepare and rebuild the end cap fan assembly. We'll take our stirrup and put it on the motor shaft at the 6 to 12 o'clock position. Next, we'll get our plastic fan. We don't believe in working this job blindly, so we take our blunt tipped wrench and we push the center cap of the fan out so that we can see up through the center of the hole when we're reassembling. The next step is to look at the hub the brake cover, you'll find two wider slots and two skinny slots. The skinny slot is to receive the head of the stirrup. The wider oriented slots are to receive the tabs on the hub of the fan. So we'll take and line that up and put that assembly together. Taking care not to damage those tabs on the so we have our stirrup at the 6 and 12 o'clock vertical position. We have our end cap assembly, fan and end cap. I line it up so that the slots for the stirrup are at 6 and 12 o'clock. I bring it to the motor. I catch the holes in the cap on the bottom two studs and rotate and line the top two up. I look through the hole in the center, I'll notice that 
The top and bottom of the stirrup should line up with the match marks on the fan, which are two raised plastic dots. And once lined up, I'll push it home. First try. Once it's on the studs, take one of the nuts and catch the first couple thread just to keep it held together. And then go retrieve your shims and put an equal number on both sides. On the job aid, we have a starting number of shims for these shim packs when a brand new brake has been installed. Please make sure you start with the total quantity that's called out on that chart. Usually they give you a couple extra in the parts box. So make sure you don't use all of them. Make sure to refer to the guide to get the correct starting number for the motor size. For our size 80 motor, our starting number from our chart is two stacks of five for each side. Once the shims and the nuts are back in place, we'll torque the nuts to the torque spec given on the job aid. It's based on the fastener size as different fasteners are used on the different size motors. Please refer to the chart. Once the nuts are torqued, return the center of the fan cap, making sure to line up the two raised triangle match marks on the cap itself to the raised dots on the end of the fan. This will line up the center of the cap in the proper orientation to the head of the stirrup. We'll reattach our fan cover and then check our axial displacement. We'll make one last verification of our axial displacement. That concludes our KM motor video for changing a brake. We hope you've enjoyed our videos on the conical motors. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you've liked our videos, please hit the like button.